This is David Finella, and I'm pleased to present to you a brief overview of my latest book on structural loads. The main purpose of this publication is to assist in the proper determination of structural loads in accordance with the 2009 edition of the International Building Code and the 2005 edition of the ASCE standard Minimum Design Loads for Buildings and Other Structures. The publication covers all of the loads shown here. Also included are detailed discussions on live load reduction as well as strength design and allowable stress design load combinations for different types of structural members subject to different types of load effects. The book contains numerous flowcharts and completely worked out design examples so that the reader can efficiently learn and properly apply the load provisions. The flowcharts provide a roadmap that guides the reader through the intricate requirements in the code. Included in the flowcharts are the applicable section numbers and equation numbers from the IBC and ASCE 7. Shown here is a flowchart from Chapter 4 on snow loads. The examples illustrate in a straightforward manner how to determine loads. They follow the steps in the flowcharts and were formulated to illustrate provisions that are not commonly covered in other texts. In Chapter 4 of the publication, snow loads are calculated for the one-story warehouse building shown on your screen. Detailed calculations are provided on how to determine both the balanced and unbalanced snow loads on the roof. A summary of these loads is shown here. In Chapter 5, wind loads are determined for the main wind force resisting system and the components and cladding of the same one-story warehouse. For comparison purposes, pressures are calculated using the simplified procedure, the analytical procedure, and the low-rise building provisions of the analytical procedure. This example clearly illustrates the main differences that can be expected between the different permissible procedures. Shown on your screen is an example building in Chapter 6 on earthquake loads. This example illustrates how to determine seismic forces on a building with a vertical combination of structural systems. A portion of another example building is shown here, and it illustrates the determination of seismic shear forces in a diaphragm. Chapter 7 covers the determination of flood loads. One of the examples illustrates how to calculate the design flood loads on the reinforced concrete columns of a residential building located in a coastal A zone. Engineers, architects, plan reviewers, and building officials will find this publication to be a valuable training resource and desk reference. It is also ideal as a textbook for students. The information needed to order this book from ICC is shown on your screen. Thank you for your interest.